How's it going? Um, Algebra 2, we're, we're back at it. This is a video talking about mathematical modeling. In front of you, you should have a sheet um, titled, let me look at mine here, modeling, uh, modeling, modeling data, some introduction notes. So um, let me just back this up a little bit. What, what are we doing with modeling? Um, all those quadratic problems, we did so many quadratic problems, and all these problems you do in math books and things, they give you a formula. They say, hey, this formula works, um, do something with it. Hey, check out this formula, plug a four in and see what happens. Okay, well, where do these formulas come from? Like, someone doesn't just invent these things. They take data, they take points and they measure things and they plot things out on a graph and then they decide a curve, uh, a model that fits all of those points. It's as close to those points as possible. Well, that, that process is called mathematical modeling, and that's what we're going to learn how to do today. We're going to have data, and we are going to come up with those formulas. Where does that formula come from that tells me how high the ball is after I launch it? Where's the formula come from that tells me um, the depth that the diver is? Um, instead of me just giving them to you, you are going to make them. So without further ado, why don't you get out your notes? Um, we're just going to kind of go through the first page together. I already have it filled out. I want you to fill it out as you go, and then we'll talk about the back together. We'll do the back together. So um, let me pull up my answer key. There it is right there. So here's our um, modeling. We learned earlier about the names of these higher order polynomials, all this modeling stuff we're going to be doing polynomials. You can model all kinds of things, different types. It just helps um, where we're at right now is a good spot to model. So we have a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c. A cubic is a degree three. We learned about the word degree. Um, that's the highest one. And then I need placeholders for all the ones underneath it. So an ax cubed, bx squared, cx to the first, and this is actually dx to the zero, but we don't write x to the zero because it's one, and it's kind of invisible. A quartic would be to the fourth power, and then all the placeholders. So then I asked you to write the standard form for a quintic, that's a to the fifth power. So the very first term should be y equals, I kind of messed that up here, how about a y equals ax to the fifth power plus bx to the fourth, and all those other things all the way down the line. Okay, that would be the model for a quintic. So now that we know how to write those, we can start to use them going on forward. So uh, this next definition is basically what we just talked about. We can ask Desmos to fit any one of those polynomials we want. We can say, hey, is this a good fit? Is this a good fit? Is this a good fit? Any one of those um, to whatever set of data we have. That process is called modeling. Right there. It's in purple. Great. Well, Desmos is going to give us all these letters up here, A, B, C, D, E, and F. It's going to tell us what numbers we should plug in there, what numbers those should be, to be as close to all of our dots as possible. We call those things as coefficients, the A, B, C, and D. We call them parameters. So you'll see on worksheets and things, I'll say write out the model using the correct parameters. That just means use the values that Desmos tells us. Okay. Uh, the next thing that Desmos is going to give us, it's something in statistics, if you take an advanced statistics course or even a regular statistics course, not Algebra 2, you'll talk about something called the R-squared value. And the R-squared value is just telling you how good of a fit is it. If that's a straight line and I try to put a curve on it, it's not going to fit very well. So my R-squared value would be kind of low. If uh, my curve hits all of my dots perfectly, then that's a, that's a fit of 1. R-squared would be equal to 1, and we call that perfect. So the closer the number is to 1, the better the fit is, R squared. The closer R squared is to 1, the better the fit, so the bigger the number. Okay. Um, here's what's going to happen. I, I put in some fake data. We don't need to see it just yet. But then I typed in this magical formula. This magical formula right here, Y1 tilde is in the top left corner of your keyboard, AX1 to the fourth, BX1 to the third. This is the formula that we asked Desmos, hey, I want you to fit a quartic to the fourth power, to my data. And Desmos will say, okay, you want a quartic? I'll give you a quartic. If you use these parameters, these numbers, in here for A, B, C, D, and E, then you're going to get an R squared value of 0.9553. That's pretty close, right? The bigger the number is, the closer to 1 it is, the better the fit. And this thing's pretty close to 1. So the next thing I want you to do is to write the actual model. What I'm saying right here is take A, B, C, and D from down here, those coefficients, and put them where they belong for A, B, C, and D in this formula. Uh, notice, though, when I write this formula right here in red, there are no more ones. Y1, X1, that, that stuff is gone. The tilde is gone. It's an equal sign. Those ones and that tilde is Desmos language. That, that's computer language that Desmos uses to, to fit um, the curve that it's fitting. For us, we're going to come up with a formula using those parameters. So this is what our formula looks like, the big, ugly formula. Remember, we talked about where does this formula come from? Here's where it comes from. Desmos and different computer software um, 
data software can fit these curves and tell us, hey, this is as close to the dots as you're going to get. So the next thing I want you to do is I want you to evaluate our function, figure out what y is when x is 13. Okay, so I'm plugging a 13, pretend like you couldn't see it, in for all of these x's. We learned some different ways to do that recently, didn't we? We can just plug it in using our calculator. We can do synthetic substitution. We can do it on a graph, and we'll do that a little bit later to practice that. But for this one, the tried and true method, let's plug these into our calculator. I'm taking all my x's out and putting them in 13s. Uh, my y value would be 350.45 when x is 13. Awesome. Okay, so that's kind of the, the rundown of it. I did like the back half of problems. But let's look at the, the front half of problems. Let's start from the beginning. So let's flip over our paper, and you're going to get this table right here. This table is taking some data points, the intensity of a light bulb. That's like how a measure of brightness, if you will, um, at different distances. Obviously, the closer you get to a light bulb, the brighter it is. The further away you get, um, the less bright it gets. But how is that related? Is it a straight line? Is it something else? Well, let's check it out. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to open up a Desmos. And through the power of technology, I've already opened up a Desmos. You open up a Desmos graphing calculator. You'll go to this plus sign, add item, and you'll click on table. When you click on add table, a blank table will come up that looks just like this. Notice the X ones and Y ones that we talked about earlier. And then I just typed in the data. I typed in everything from that table in there. The 1, 1 1.5, the intensity, and the distance. Okay, the next thing we want to do, and if I'm looking at your notes, or you should be on the back as well, it says use Desmos to plot the points. Check. Make sure to zoom fit so you can see all the points. Notice there's five points over here, but I only see four. That's because I'm zoomed in. I'm looking at all this negative stuff that I don't need to. This little button right here is called zoom fit, a little magnifying glass. When we click it, it zooms to show all the data that you just typed in there. It makes the perfect window for you. So here it is five points. It doesn't look like a straight line. Something else is going on. Well, let's investigate more. Uh, the next thing says, uh, sketch what the graph looks like. So you can just make a little scatter plot and put those dots. Number two says, write the cubic model that best represents the data. Cubic model. So now we're typing in that special password into Desmos that is going to fit a curve to these points, a cubic curve, a cubic polynomial. We have to put all the ones in. You have to type in the special language. So here it goes. It's Y1 tilde ax1 cube, the degree is 3, that's a cubic, but we need all the other placeholders as well, plus bx1 to the second, bx1 squared, plus cx1 plus d. Wow, pretty darn close looking at it. Look how close this model is to hitting all of our dots, almost perfect. Well, I can see exactly how good it is, statistically speaking, by looking at the r squared value. The closer it is to 1, the better the fit. Man, oh man, is this a really good fit. R squared is 0 0.9987. That's what it's asking for on number three. So go ahead and write that down. The next thing says, on your paper, your paper, change your Y values from a Y to an I and change your X's to a D. So this is just X's and Y's jargon. Like, what does that mean as far as the problem? The problem is talking about distance and intensity. So let's go back to our notes. There's the little sketch you drew. We want the cubic model, so I'm writing the model. I'm taking my A's, B's, and C's out and putting them where they belong. No more ones and an equal sign. Now it says on your paper, let's, let's add some context to this. It's not Y, it's the intensity, so I change it to an I. And it's not X, it's a distance, a distance away from the light bulb, so I change those to D's. Now this model is a formula, and this formula can tell me the intensity of the light bulb However far away I am, I'll plug in for D. So what's the next thing say? Use the model to estimate the intensity when the object is 2.75 meters away. Awesome. I'm just going to take these Ds out. In my calculator, I'm going to jam in 2.75 into their plate, into those, those places for Xs. I'm going to rip it through. Notice over here, I did a little screenshot for you of how you can do this with Desmos itself. I'm going to go back to Desmos real quick. And all I'm asking it is, hey, when the X value was 2.75, it gave me a line. Look, here's where the x value is 2.75. If I can look and see where that crosses our curve at 1.2, well, then that's what the y value is. That is the intensity at 2.75 away. 1.2, there it is again. Okay. Uh, the very last one says to use your graph to decide at what distance the intensity is basically zero, is zero. That's asking for a y-intercept. So all I did on my graph was click on the y-intercept it, this popped up and showed me it's at 3.314 meters away. If you're that far away from the light bulb, 
The intensity is basically zero. Great practice on modeling. We do a lot of stuff with modeling. These are where these formulas are coming from. You have a worksheet on immigration to practice this stuff. Make sure you're reading the directions. It can be kind of tricky. Email me any questions you have. Otherwise, bring them to class. Besides that, we are done. Peace.